Now we want to talk about how this process of integration by substitution works with definite integrals. Fortunately, the process starts off mostly the same. Uh, it's not really until we get down to the last step that we have a little bit of a difference that goes back to what we've already done with definite integrals. So we'll still start off by identifying the interior function. So in this case, e to the 3x. 3x is our interior function. So we'll let u equal 3x, which means that du over dx equals 3, or that du equals 3dx. So we're still dealing with these simpler substitution problems. So we should be able to find both of those pieces in our original integration problem. So we can swap both of those out to rewrite our integral as the integral of e to the u du. And now since we're dealing with definite integrals, we're still integrating from 0 to 2, but those variables were in terms of x. So I'm going to update this just to give myself a little bit of a note here. We're integrating from x equals 0 to x equals 2. So we've changed the variable in this integral problem. We want to make sure we don't use these values until we get to the very end and rewrite this problem in terms of x. So we'll integrate. The integral of e to the u will just be e to the u. And then we'll want to evaluate that from x equals 0 to x equals 2. Again, we, with definite integrals, we don't have to worry about that plus c because when you subtract the two functions, those will cancel out. So replacing u with 3x, this will give us e to the 3x, which we want to evaluate from x equals 0 to x equals 2. So up until this point, the process is pretty same for indefinite or definite integrals. With indefinite integrals, we'd have the plus c that we'd want to add on there. But since we're dealing with a definite integral, now that we've found the indefinite integral, replaced that new variable back with the original variable, now we can make our substitutions and subtract. So this would become e to the 3 times 2 minus e to the 3 times 0, which is just going to be 0. Anything to the 0 power is just 1. So we're going to get our final answer to be e to the 6 minus 1. So really, the process for definite and indefinite integrals are quite similar. The only real difference we have is then at the end, once we have that indefinite integral completed, we'll evaluate it at the upper and lower bounds, just like we did with definite integrals before. In example 7, our interior function is x minus 4. So this is something of the form 1 over x, or 1 over u. So du over dx will equal the derivative of x minus 4, which in this case is just 1. So we get du equals dx. And we have that dx exactly in our original problem to swap out. So this is going to become the integral of 1 over u du. And we're integrating from x equals 5 to x equals 8. So again, we just want that kind of note to ourselves to make sure we don't evaluate this by plugging values in for u. We'll need to get it back in terms of x before we make those substitutions. So this will become the natural log of the absolute value of u, which then we'll want to evaluate from x equals 5 to x equals 8. So before we make those substitutions, we'll rewrite this as the natural log of, of the absolute value of x minus 4, evaluated from x equals 5 to x equals 8. So now that these variables agree with each other again, we can make those substitutions and get to our final answer. So this would become the natural log of the absolute value of 8 minus 4 minus the natural log of the absolute value of 5 minus 4. Which will be the natural log of 8 minus 4 is 4, 
and the absolute value of 4 is just 4, so this becomes the natural log of 4 minus the natural log of the absolute value of 1, or just the natural log of 1, which is 0. So we get, as our final answer, the natural log of 4.